So, uh, the question is, you know, why choose computer engineering? And I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, as you may know, Dr. Dennis Peters. I'm the chair uh, of electrical and computer engineering. Um, and so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about some options, uh, some a little bit about the program. I have two speakers here, and I'll introduce them briefly, and we'll have a little discussion about some of these things, um, and then I'll leave you leave you with some pointers about where you can go for more information. Um, so I'm actually suspecting that the dozen or so students we have here are probably the ones who are actually really kind of thinking computer engineering might be one or they're less on undecided. Um, but uh, let me. Part of the goal here is to show you what, what, what uh, why you might want to cho choose computer engineering. Um, what do computer engineers do, engineers do? And the question I ask yourself is why, why if you're going to ask yourself uh, why choose computer engineering, I ask you to think, okay, what do I want to do? What do you want to do when you grow up, if you like? Um, and so here's some answers, some things you might want to do. Um, first thing, I would say make the world go round. Computer engineers do make the world go round in many ways. Um, telecommunications is an obvious one. A very strong part of our uh, um, uh, of where computer engineers work. Um, we have, uh, and, and certainly a strong part of our program is focused in the, in the area of telecommunications. Um, I say power generation distribution. We all we all don't live without power. You, you had a power outage a couple of weeks ago, and you notice how quickly that became nasty, things started to go poorly, um, and you think, oh, well, that's electrical. No, no, no not anymore. Um, there's a lot of computer in, in the power generation distribution, control systems, and all these sorts of things. That are, what's, what's going on in the power system? What brings it? What uh, takes the power offline when something trips out? And what brings it back online when it works? It involves a lot of computer engineering as well as the electrical side of it. And in a similar way, sustainable energy. Lots, lots of things there. So, you know, Communications and energy is one branch. Of course, we design things that people use every day. You know, most of you have got a phone in your pocket or in your hands. Um, you're using it all the time. Uh, you've got your laptops, your smartphones, your you know every, all, everything. Everything we touch on a daily basis, pretty much, has some Im impact, is or has been impacted by a computer engineer. Um, even your car cars and planes and so on. And in fact, um, I've got some links to some videos and so on. I'm assuming I can get on the, on the Wi-Fi board and watch some. Um, the, uh, you think about a car. And, uh, you've heard me talk on this before, you might know. Think about a car, a modern car these days, and uh, try and guess how much software, how much code is in that car as compared to mechanical components. Because most of you would think, oh, cars, that's mechanical engineering. Planes that's aeronautical engineering. How much code's in your car compared to mechanical components? And I, so I, I dug this up and researched the ratio of mechanical components. And what I mean by mechanical components is I'm counting every screw, bolt, everything in the car. And the ratio of mechanical components, or lines of code, sorry, lines of code to mechanical components. Anyone want to guess? Who isn't in my class and heard it already two weeks ago? Thousand. thousand to one? Yeah. Not bad. The, the number I came up with was 3,000 to one. 3,000 lines of code per mechanical component. So if anyone tells you that a car is a mechanical engineering uh, project, it's not. It's a computer engineering project these days. So, uh, you know, and obviously, of course, as in most projects, most real projects involve a, a wide diversity of, of specializations, and so there is, of course, some, still some mechanical engineering going on in cars, but there's also an awful lot of computer engineering going on there. Um, do you want to impact people's lives? And you may think of how your phone or your or the, uh, the smart technology around us impact lives. Um, Engineers are problem-solvers of the highest order. Professor Maya Mataro is one such engineer. She is the founding director of the University of Southern California's Center for Robotics and Embedded Systems, which focuses on the science and technology of effective, robust, and scalable robotics.
robotic systems with broad and far-reaching applications. One such application is the integration of artificial intelligence and robotics into healthcare delivery using socially assistive robots. Metaric's socially assistive robots interact in a therapeutic setting with mentally impaired patients afflicted with ailments ranging from strokes and brain injuries to Alzheimer's disease and autism. In an interview with LA Weekly, Metaric said that her goal is to provide fully personalized one-on-one -on -one care for millions of people with special health and cognitive needs who otherwise do not receive that care. So social assistive robotics is a new field. I'm happy to say we've coined the term, so I hope it sticks. And the idea is that robots can help people through social interaction as opposed to through physical interaction. So there's, you can imagine a lot of uses for robots that physically help people. Like people are physically disabled, they, they fall, they need to be picked up, they need to reach something. But on the social realm, there's even more we can do. We can help encourage people, monitor people, coach them to learn new skills, to require skills, to reacquire skills that they've lost. Smaller socially assisted robots may have other advantages over physically assisted ones. It is less likely they will intimidate or harm a patient. And robots that perform physical tasks are more complex to design and program, making them more expensive to produce. Since Metallic Social I'm going to stop that one because that's another. There's, it's a seven minute video, and that, given that I squandered most of our time by showing up late, I'm going to stop that one for a minute. And, uh, but uh, the, the post, the. Um, I'll be posting a link to the, to the presentation, um, and uh, the links are in there, so you'll certainly be, be able to go and have a look at that uh, if you want. And I encourage you to have a, have, a, have a look at some of this stuff. I've got a couple of other things I might show in a second. So, impact on lives in many ways. So the robotics is that one, but there's many, many other ways we can have, um, have an impact. Um, how people learn. You know, in, 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 all the technology we, see, we use in the classroom, but some of you have also used DQL, for example, and all kinds of distance learning technology. And there's, um, it's not all been done. You know, there's lots of lots of ways that can be developed. Um, save lives. Go into a modern operating room, a hospital. Tell me how that how that gets on without computer. Right? There's a whole lot of stuff that's going on in any modern uh, operating room or, or search and rescue facility. You name it. Um, one one that I particularly like because it actually ties into my uh, my research a little bit is this one here. One after YouTube, which is always dicey. In, in a, mm -hmm. Now this one, the, the audio doesn't get you much. It does. It doesn't like much. So what's going on here? This is um, a, a, a jet blue, blue plane. A little bit hard to see, but what the front wheel on this plane is locked sideways. So it, he's trying to land this plane, and it's a plane full of people. Landing at uh, LAX, I believe it is, um, and the, the wheel is broken and it's broken, locked sideways. And you'll note what's going on here. It's starting to touch down here. And what the uh, the uh, news that went around it, they pointed out. They said, you know, they said this is going to be a disaster. He's running out of runway here. He's got about yeah. another 500 yards before he reaches the end of this runway here. We'll let, we'll let it finish. It's not so he's got the first on. He is bringing it to a quick slow uh, stop here, though, towards the end. Well, you see what happens now. That's an incredible job by those pilots. So he actually landed that plane right down the center of the runway with the wheel on sideways. As he says, incredible, right? And so. The interesting part of it is they they knew that that wheel was locked long, well in advance of that land, and so the news, the CNN, actually had the, the people who had trained the pilot in the newsroom talking about this, and you know the uh, CNN people are saying, oh, this is going to be a disaster, right? We'll have, they crashed, and, you know, the thing is landing live, and they're going to, it's going to be on TV. Um, so you know, it was they were setting it up to be really bad, but the, the trainer said, no, 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 this will be this will go fine. He's done this before. Do you think he'd actually landed that plane before? They landed in simulation, right? Simulation saves lives all over the place. Um, I say it ties into my research because if you want to look around down the, the, uh, the basement down here, uh, there's a big 360 degree um, uh, visualization center where, where, where we put, uh, we have a, a motion platform and a 360 degree uh, visualization thing. What we're doing is simulation of, of uh, small crafts. 
So that's uh, uh, fast rescue craft and uh, lifeboats. And we're using, using that for training individuals to use those things because when you really need to use them, it's always the worst conditions you've seen. So you can't train in the real conditions, but when you really need them, you're in the worst possible conditions you've ever seen in your life. And so training in a simulation is a huge benefit. And so uh, you know, learning how to use those things in a simula simulation environment is uh, absolutely a huge lifesaver. So, and that's, you know, that, that's a pro project. It's an interesting in uh, interaction because, of course, it's an ocean naval architecture thing. But the bulk of the people working on that project are computer or electrical engineers, yeah. and mostly computer. Um, the other thing about engineering, about uh, computer engineering, say, you know, do you want to work with people? And you think, oh, we're geeks, we sit in dark closets and program our computers. No, no. Most real jobs, and that's why I've got Laura, one of the reasons I've got Laura here is, is that most real jobs have um, work our team environment. Lots of times you're interact interacting with customers, all kinds of that sort of thing. So there's lots of people involved. And uh, do you want to make money? Well, sure you do. That's why you're in engineering. Or maybe it's because you love it. But so uh, these are the salaries. Uh, this is from the little bit dated from uh, Government Canada statistics. Um, and these are quoted as hourly wages, almost no, although almost no engineer is paid hourly. But these are quoted as hourly wages. You note that computer engineering is the largest, is the highest of all out there. So although you may think that the guys in the oil industry are getting all the money. The stats aren't bearing it out. Computer engineers are still making good money. And that's nationally. Um, locally, you know, the market, the market is, is, is pretty good. Um, and the same, you can find current statistics from the US government talking talk about where, where, are the, where is the growth coming in the next little while. Um, lots of computer engineering stuff. So there's jobs that are going to worry about that. Uh, just to give it, uh, the other side of it is, you might want to get where the innovation is, where there's interesting stuff going on. And so what I did was I pulled up the, uh, this is the 2013 EU report on the Industrial uh, R&D Investment Scoreboard. They ranked the top, the world top 2,000 companies by R&D investment. And this is the top 24 of that group. And it's reading this way. So number one is Volkswagen. And then there's Samsung and Microsoft. So some of these companies you'll recognize. Given that they're the top, they're the top ones of the world, they're probably ones you recognize. Many of them you'll recognize as being primarily computer and electrical engineers. Okay. Samsung, Microsoft, Intel, um, lots of what, what it is here. If, if you're not in in, in uh, some engineering discipline, you're in ph pharmaceutical. So all the ones you don't recognize are pharmaceutical companies, right? Well, some of you do, like Johnson and Johnson, but. Uh, so Samsung, Intel, uh, Google, of course, Siemens, Cisco, Panasonic, IBM, Nokia, Sony. Those are the obvious ones. You're going to say, oh, yes, clearly lots of computer engineering R&D going on there. And, but, you know, R&D to me means that's fun stuff for engineers. Because that's, that's where you're doing development. You're building something new. You might think about, okay, let's think about Volkswagen, Toyota, Robert, Robert Bosch, Delmer, General Motors, Honda, Ford. These guys are obviously big names, and you might say, oh, automotive. And in fact, in the, in the industrial sector, in this list, it says, oh, yeah, they're automotive sector. Sure they are. But what R&D are they doing? Remember my talk about how many lines of code in the car? Most of the R&D going on in those ones is computer and electrical. And probably comp mostly computer. So lots of fun stuff going on. Lots of careers. I'm going to I'm going to uh, stop talking soon because I wanted I wanted to give a few minutes to let Rory and Bill who got here actually on time. I, I, I'm assuming it's better than I did um, to give their thing. Um, so areas where we, you might find yourself working: um, computer systems, digital hardware. You might think you know, so. You might have the impression at this stage that computer engineering is all about software. It's not. There's software in there, and if you don't like software, well, computer engineering is probably not the right choice for you. But it's not all about software. Um, like I said, digital hardware design, uh, computer systems of various forms, 
instrumentation and control and software, of course. Um, industries, basically anywhere. Um, that's that one. I think is a Volvo one. Let's look at that just for for the time. Yeah, Volvo trucks. This is kind of cool. This is very short. This is just a little demo of what's going on in Volvo. This is Volvo or a car company, right? Volvo's a car company, you say. Well, where's the research going on here? This is they're doing the testing of their of their uh, um, emergency braking system that uh, automatically detects something stopped in front and brakes the truck so it stops. Here's the guy. And I, you know, the guy in, the, in front of this better be the designer, right? The guy sitting in that white truck, the white car in front, because you look what he's going to do. I'll show the video now from the inside. This is the driver's view. And he's just cruising along at highway speeds. And you see this warning system coming on and actually stopping that truck before it hits the car. Pretty impressive. And of course, that's you guys, right? That's us that did that. So, it, it, you know, it's not a mechanical, although there's mechanical components in it, the stuff that makes that stuff work is all about what we do. And so we can be. You know, you want to work in the auto industry? There you go. Go try it. And you know, whatever you, wherever you want to go in terms of niche technology. Um, so you can guess what the employers are. Basically, they're almost anyone. The ob obvious one, utilities, um, in the power and in the telecommunications, heavy industry, high tech. And, and this this list here, by the way, was just a list that I pulled off my head, out of my head, of companies that I could name someone who worked at. Yeah, Sorry to yeah, sure. yeah, no I, like, I got a thing, so I'm going to go, but there were a couple things I was like, uh, sure. I was really curious about. Like, if I went into this program, where I'd leave with the ability to write a program from start to finish and get it on my desktop so that I can just click on it and start it up, or would that be more you, of a computer science? You no, know, you, you should absolutely should, should be able to do that. In fact, you should be able to do that by the end of 1020. So, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely that's that, that that's, that's what you would do. Okay, well, you, can, like, you can certainly do that. The other reason I was interested in computer science is because when I did the robot for ten forty, mm. I was a lot more interested in the coding than the mechanics. Like I wasn't excited that I figured out the mechanics of the wheels. I was excited that I figured out right. how to do that. Would yeah. would this computer science, uh, no, not computer science, computer engineering, focus more on that, or does it focus more on the hardware of the computers? Um, it's a bit of a mixture of both. So the the balance of hardware and software is is. Uh, What's the, the real balance? Uh, hard to say. And in terms of core, we could look at the course. In fact, why don't I flip ahead and just look? At the Sorry about yeah, this. yeah, no problem. I understand. And, and I want to. I want to. We've got some question answers, so I'm going to. I'm going to skip ahead and let the question and answer happen because a lot of that's going to come out of it. Um, what are you seeing here in terms of? You know, we've got software. So we're saying software here. Here, that's sort of software. Um, that's computer hardware, software. So there's there's a fair bit of the software in there, and certainly you know end-to-end -end programming from from scratch to cool applications, you're there for sure. Um, the hardware there's a little bit more hardware, a little bit of hardware in there as well, so it's a balance of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not a pure software program by any stretch. Yeah. It's not a pure hardware. Program. Plus, as, sorry, as you get into the later terms, you have the opportunity to do CS electives. So. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, what's, uh, that's what I'm not showing there. Um, so just to give a sort of overview, that's the kind of courses you're going to do. Uh, more programming, software design, um, visual hardware design, your architecture and objects. That's the, that's the, the basic stuff. Um, given time, I'm going to, there's a course, as you can see those online. I do have two guests here who I asked to come out, and so I'm, I'm, and I'm pleased they did. Um, I've waved at them so far. Lori Hogan is a class of 2003 graduate in computer engineering. She's currently a project engineer at Secor. And I have Bill Hayes here, or William Hayes. Um, he's a current, current student, uh, senior in uh, the class of 2015, right? I thought I got that right. So um, maybe a yeah, I'll ask each of them to stand up for a minute and just say hello, introduce themselves, and uh, and uh, we can do a little bit of question and answer on that sort of thing. 
You go ahead, Dory. I have to go up front. You tell me where to go. Wait, that's an open-ended question. Okay. Um, my name is Lori Hogan. I'm a computer engineer, class of 2003. Um, I'm kind of unique, I guess. I'm probably the only person I know who's stayed at the same company since I've started my engineering career. I've been at C-Corp. Um, technically, I'm, I'm under the software development team, but C-Corp is a, a contract engineering-based company. So we don't do, say, what Verifin might do. That's another local company that hires a lot of computer engineers. We don't sit down and, and make our own software products that the guy who's not here <laughs> is interested in and sell them to the world. People come to Secor with, with engineering problems in a remote sensing, ice engineering, geotechnical engineering, uh, image analysis, image processing, mining, yada, all sorts of industries, whatnot. They come to us to solve their problem and what our team does is develop the software to solve that problem. Sometimes the software is all they need to solve the problem. Sometimes it's uh, a part of a larger system with, with computer hardware or, a, or cameras uh, or other types of hardware, depending on what the problem is. Okay, that's good. Why don't we get Bill to come up and, and sit down. So why don't you say where you're to, and we'll get you both a little bit far. All right, uh, my name is Bill. I just finished term six. I'm on my fifth work term now. Um, so yeah, as Dennis mentioned, I graduate in a couple of years. I've already had a few work terms, and they've been pretty spread out in lots of different industries and different parts of computer engineering. Like I've had three that were in telecommunications, and two of those were very, very hardware oriented. And last work term, I was at Verifin, which is a software company. So I don't know, had a lot of variation. I think it's good. So if you have any questions about work terms or anything, I can help you out. So my intent was uh, to, to have these two here basically to, to answer questions. So I think you can ask me questions, but I'm a born old guy. These guys are a little bit younger and a little bit more close to what you're, what you're seeing. Um, so uh, I, could I could come up with my own question, but maybe I'll start with you if you have any questions. Questions for these guys or for me? No? Um, well, let me let me ask a question. So, Bill, maybe you, you talked about your a couple of work terms. What's your favorite work term so far? Mm, that's tough. I probably liked my Verifin work term the best. That was the last one I had, so my fourth one. That's a uh, they make software which uses artificial intelligence techniques to uh, look for money laundering or like banking fraud and they sell it to a bunch of banks and credit unions mostly in the US so I really like that one because I got to do a lot of software design type stuff really hands-on and actually like some real engineering work and also is just a great company to work with like they're very uh, very relaxed and it's almost like a parody of a software company like there's you know nerf bullets flying around all over the place and they I don't know, bring in pizza every day and stuff like that so I mean that, that was great I also like my other ones though like every work term I've had has been really uh, rewarding I think um, maybe Lori can you want to uh, tell us about the favorite part of your job uh, my favorite the part of favorite part of my job is the fact that we, we're contract based, which means uh, the projects that I get to work on are, can be so varied. Um, some, sometimes they're pure software, I'm just sitting and um, uh, designing and coding, a, a, say a, a desktop app that communicates with uh, Internet of Things, like buoys that are out in the ocean that are communicating via Iridium to our software and we have to decode what they're saying and show it and whatnot. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, I've done worked on hardware and software related to uh, experiments that are going up in a in a satellite microgravity experiments. And there's no uh, desktop software up there, so it's all uh, hardware programming and making sure that things are communicating correctly within the experiment and down to the ground. Um, I really like the variation of the things I get to work on. I recognize that we're. 
up, to, up against the end of our time. I'm not sure which clock is more accurate. Uh, that was certainly fast. not that. Yeah, that this one's fast, fast by a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, so we're okay. So, um, ten to. Yeah, okay. Any other questions <clears throat> from you guys? Yeah. Well, we'd like to get involved with the tech industry. What would be like some pros and cons to joining computer or electrical? Like, what would, would I be more involved with if I got myself a computer engineering degree? What do you mean by the tech? Like, mm, I, I'm just throwing it out there, like a big industry like Apple or Google. Yeah, yeah I would say that if you're looking for those guys, definitely you're looking for uh, the computer. Yeah. Right? They, hire, uh, they hire mechanical electrical, the whole works as well, probably not many civil, but, um, but uh, yeah, if you're looking to get into Apple or Google, yeah, uh, the computer is your place, for sure. Yeah? Um, this is going to sound really corny, but do you guys find it rewarding to do computer engineering like I know you produce really cool stuff and it's really like oh look I made it work but like do you find it rewarding in like a personal like yeah I did it way uh, yeah I, I think that's one of the best things about it actually it's like there's a lot of opportunities to do like small projects where you get to design something from like right from the start right to the finish where I think in a lot of industries you don't really get that opportunity like you're just working on a very small part of something that's much bigger which does exist in computer engineering too but it is really rewarding to be able to work on something where it's completely your project and you can just start and just do whatever you want which is something that is possible with computer engineering not so much with other things like civil. Civil. I, I, I find um, I find it extremely rewarding to just thinking. I've I've worked on some search and rescue uh, software that's been known to save lives. Um, I've sent software and hardware that I've worked on into space, which I think is pretty cool. Um, being able to use the, the skills I've learned and the skills I've acquired elsewhere on safety critical um, software and hardware has been particularly cool because I know that that's directly having an impact on someone's health and safety or life. Well, and with the space software, it's just pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I find it extremely rewarding. Um, I like I like when things get get done and you feel good about them. <laughs> if I could just add, add to that, yeah, just, you know, having an impact on lives is something. Yeah. And now that most engineers have an impact on people's lives in one way or another, there's certainly a, a, the possibility in computer engineering in particular to have a broad impact on a very large number of people. You know, you work for Apple, okay, you know, you may think that the smartphone is not a, it is a, you know, almost a toy in some sense, but on the other hand, it's had a huge impact. I mean, it's like to have an impact, and some of them can be, you know, much more, you know, down worth than that. And they you know, do small stuff that has a huge impact as well. So. I think it's, you alluded to it earlier. Computer engineering is where the innovation yeah, is uh, added. Uh, um, I'm not saying that mechanics and electrical uh, have reached their capacity, but getting as much functionality as you can out of those mechanical and electrical components, that's part of where computer engineering is at the moment, which it's pretty cool. <laughs> I asked this before, but I'll ask it again. If I chose to go into electrical for term three, I know that both of the courses that you take in term three are the same. Would I be able to switch if I chose to do so once I reached term three and completed all those courses to computer engineering? Uh, yeah, well, so the short answer is yes, it's possible. Um, you can always apply to switch to disciplines. The, the, uh, the good thing about computer electrical, as you pointed out, is that you haven't closed any doors uh, at the end of term three. So at the end of term three, Realistically, you could change. It is an application process. You got to do some paperwork. You've got to process it through, and so on. So, you know, in theory, you could be turned down. Um, in practice, it's unlikely. Um, so, you know, assuming that your marks are okay and so on, I, I would think it's reasonably easy. But if you're thinking computer, if you want to work for Apple, you want to be. A computer. You could do it the other way around. You could apply for a computer, then at the end of term three, switch to electrical. That's the only thing to it. But, you know, and, and I think one of the things is don't, you know, think more, more long term than what, what courses you've done this term. Because, of course, if you look back, you know, look at what courses you're going to do. There's term three. You're going to do math, circuits, digital logic, programming, and physics and device materials, which is sort of like physics, chemistry kind of thing. So you're going to, you're going to uh, 
you know, you get a, bit, a fair mix in there, but it doesn't really give you the whole depth of what you're going to what's in the program. But are you allowed to concentrate? Yes. Um, the way of the concentration works is through the electives. So in terms seven and eight, you have a lot, lots of choice in the program, and that's how you pick your best.